and we're back with the fourth video in our series of this gigantic tabletop gaming house build. If this is the first video you've seen of this project, go back to my channel and start with video number one to kind of see the progress and how we got to here. But I started with uh, cutting out the edges of this chimney to give it a more organic look because it was going to be made of stone. You'll see that the chimney is actually divided up into three separate pieces. That's so each of the individual pieces, the first floor, second floor, and roof can all be removed individually of each other and still have the chimney attached. Again, the second floor of this can actually be used on its own, so I wanted to make sure that it would still have a chimney associated with it. So I got the markings on this done to cut and remove material that needed to be removed, like this piece of timber and then also a piece of that smaller roof there on the right. Getting them in place was really important because uh, it kind of really changed the whole silhouette of the entire house. Uh, made it look really great and got me really excited to start painting it soon. Uh, there was still a bit more work to do before that, but I was really excited. So all these kind of fit together nicely here and then I attached them with some hot glue and yeah, it was on to the next step after this. After I got these all attached, I went ahead and started to make some little tubular type things to go on the top. I don't know what they're called, but uh, I first had carved stone into them, but then I remade them without stone and decided they'd be more like a, cl a clay or cement type thing to kind of break up the long, long, long stone pattern. So I took my little hot wire or my little hot poker thing here and uh, melted out some shallow holes to kind of glue them into place and I thought they turned out very nicely. It was a new tool, it was very inexpensive on Amazon and yeah, it's been very helpful since I got it. And you see how it really kind of created a whole new silhouette for the house, made it look really cool and each one of those pieces is separate from the other so you can dismantle the whole thing and put it back together. Uh, I'm really glad I went this way because it makes the piece more versatile. The next step was to actually work on a guard railing for this kind of second story kind of balcony patio. And I just got the height by using the, my miniature there and then cut out some kind of half oval uh, shapings to create the rail. I glued those in place and you, you don't I don't have any footage of it but I actually do add a little bit more uh, to these railings to give them a little bit more depth and texture uh, making them really pop but uh, once I got those glued in place it was time to move on to uh, doing some windows and the funny thing about the windows is I started out by using what's called granny grating I think it's a slang term for it but it's like a kind of a crocheting type material really cheap made of plastic and I cut all the windows out and it looked pretty good but I ended up finding a much better material that I did not film cutting because it took just as long to cut them all out and you'll see that later but yeah turned out to look pretty good I thought I moved on to the doors next and I just took those uh, cutouts that I had done originally and split them in half so they were a bit thinner uh, cut some more strips of thin pieces of foam, gave them some wood texture, and then I just glued them on front and back on each of these door cutouts, giving it a nice wood looking feel. After that, I ended up cutting out some nice small little like door hinges like you'd see on a medieval door. Uh, I ended up doing out the foam similarly to the way that I did the roof shingles, which you can see in a previous video, but uh, I cut those out and then on a thicker piece of foam and then I slice them very thinly and then attach them as those long hinges which you'll see here next. This is where the Proxon really comes in handy again. Uh, you can get some pretty fine cuts on this, things that you wouldn't be able to do easily with a knife uh, because after you cut this out you just flip it on its side and then cut really thin, you know, sixteenth of an inch or like mil to mil thick pieces. I then needed to create some door handles and I made this out of a wiring that I had from a previous hobby. This is a wiring used in bonsai trees to kind of train branches in the way that you want them to go. But I basically just wrapped it around a barbecue skewer and then uh, cut it into little loops 
and yeah, that worked out actually really well. I then moved on to kind of covering up some of those corner pieces where I didn't wrap the brick around an edge or the stone around an edge because I already had another idea how to solve for that. So I cut these squares and then I only cut out like an L-shaped piece of them to be like kind of like an L-shaped stone or I guess they're probably called corner stones to cover up those edges and hide just the exposed foam without any previous existing stone or brick texture on them. I made sure to make the corner stones two separate thicknesses and then I attached them with some hot glue. I used the two separate thicknesses because I didn't want to just look like it. It would end up just looking like a straight piece of one big tall cornerstone and I wanted to look like they were individual pieces. I also made sure to make them a little bit longer on one side so I could stagger them as they went up, but just long enough to cover up the seam between where the brick ends and the edge of the new piece without any texture began. And you can kind of see it here in the photo where one piece is longer than the other. And this had a really nice kind of finish to it. And, but it needed a little bit more because the edges were too sharp. So I then took one of those clay sculpting tools that I have and I just kind of dragged it across, uh, smoothing out the edges and making the corners not look so freshly cut. After this was done, I made sure to texture all of the stones a little bit differently than I did the brick. I used this tool uh, that was made by uh, Tabletop Witchcraft, actually. He has a great tutorial on it, and I made it, and honestly, it works great. So definitely go check him out. I'll link that in the description below for you to check out how to make your own. But that worked really well. I used it on all the like the more kind of like stony, I guess not stony, but like uh, kind of like clay or cement pieces. I then wanted to make a front porch for this, and I ended up not using this particular porch that I designed. Uh, I ended up going with something a little bit more organic, kind of like that interior stone uh, kind of landing that you see there, but a little bit larger with a step. After this, I actually went ahead and designed some stairs. And honestly, I built them for function over looks. So you can see they, they kind of look a little cheesy to me, but they work because a little mini can stand on each individual tread. But that's going to be it for this video. Um, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video where we start to paint. And I was so excited to get to painting. It took a long time, but I was really excited to get there. So catch you in the next video and see you later.